This video is gonna get really real, really fast. This darkness represents the mind that is clouded with sexual immorality. God's light comes and tries to expose and heal, but often it is really uncomfortable and a man would even try to push it away. Sometimes the presence of God floods the room. This could be through a forced entry into a group of loving believers at church or an anointed worship song to which the man cannot deny, though he tries, the power and love of God. And he might even begin to enjoy it for a little while. But as soon as that moment is over, he runs to go back to the darkness, be comfortable, do whatever he wants with whomever he wants. Let's try and read some scripture in this darkness. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. All right, enough of this darkness. We all know it isn't okay to cheat on your partner. That's usually what comes to mind when a person mentions sexual immorality. What's discussed is usually adultery. But some of us know it's much more than that. In Matthew 5 verse 28, Jesus says, But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And the severity of this sin is so bad, and this is just in a person's insight. He isn't actually doing anything. This applies to both men and women. That the next verse says, If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away from you because it's more profitable to you that one part of your body perish than for your whole body to be put in hell. Now, I don't mean to make this such a big issue that it cripples you, but we have to expose sexual immorality for what it is. And it's everywhere. Media especially has been flooded with sexualized women and men, games like who do you rather. There's all these things around us that is encouraging us to create fantasies in our mind of the ideal man or the ideal woman we want to be with. And when we don't get that, we can do that through games, through imagination, through creativity. And it's all supposed to be fun. Let me give you just one more verse that tells you about the importance of this particular sin. In Acts chapter 15 verse 29, the apostles are writing to a group of Gentiles whom were being troubled by other early Christians uh, that they were not doing certain things right in the right way. And these apostles decided to send a letter to them saying in verse 28, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. So can you imagine of the billions of sins that man is able to commit? These were the four things that the apostles thought they should emphasize for the Gentiles. That you just make sure that these things are avoided at all costs and you will be fine. No one will be able to criticize you. From this we see sexual immorality is one of the biggest no-nos in the Bible. And this body, the Bible says, is not your own because of the price God paid for you. He bought your body with the blood of his son Jesus Christ. It's the highest price that has ever been paid in this universe. I'd even take this as far as to say that when you're trying to please your own body by your own self, it's the same thing. Now, nowhere in the Bible does it say that self-pleasing is bad. But when you look at the importance God gives for our bodies and for His spirit and our spirit and our soul, it really doesn't add up with self-pleasure being okay. If you don't agree, just ask yourself this question. If you believe in God, would you be okay with Him being in the room when you're having fun? Would you really comfortably say God would fully endorse what it is you're doing? Or thinking, if you still don't agree, I understand. This is the uncomfortable light we're talking about. Satan is on the move, guys. He is so ready to tell us all these lies that it's okay and there's nothing really specifically mentioned in the Bible about that. Well, the slightest doubt you have shows that something is off, something is wrong. Go and check for yourself about the holiness of God and what he wants for his children. You will find your answers. Whether it's self-pleasure or fantasizing about someone 
someone in your head who isn't your partner or you're not married to them or even if you are married to that person just 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 think of this you are picturing them and doing things with them in your head without their knowledge without their permission you're basically disrespecting them and their bodies and you're also disrespecting who you are and you're disrespecting god it's a no win for anyone and this is really uncomfortable for me to talk about but we got to get it out of our lives even when you're pleasing yourself you are lowering the value of your body you're just saying my body is there to serve me my wants my desires what you're doing is you're idolizing your wants over what god wants and you're putting more importance on what you want with whom you want over what god wants and with whom he wants you to be with It's all about the intention and the motive behind all of these acts. Something that will help you understand more about why this is wrong is by looking at what God has to say about what did he intend sex for in the first place. It was meant as a kind of communion between two people. A man and woman become one. They join and they they make babies, you know. It's a beautiful thing. It's nothing bad. It's nothing horrible. Pleasure is a bonus, but you isolate pleasure from all of this and you do things just for the pleasure. It's a different story. The Bible also refers to Jesus as the bridegroom and the church as the bride, and that's not to give you a very creepy picture, but it's supposed to tell you for marriage to be equated with Jesus and the church, it's something pure and holy. It's something about a relationship of pure love not just pleasure if god treated us for his own pleasure he would make us his slaves but he said no i've called you friends and not slaves because i tell you secrets that masters don't tell their servants sex is intended for a man and a woman to have this beautiful bond that no other relationship is able to have you can't have it with a mother and daughter or a father and son well people are perverting even that nowadays but it is fully enjoyed according to the bible between a man and a woman as much as jesus wants to enjoy a relationship with the church his bride through holy communion through spiritual bonding it's nothing physical about that metaphor that's how holy the act of sex is supposed to be And I know this is super contrary to everything we know about sex today. In school, I had a lot of classmates who would constantly educate me about what sex is and enlighten me on certain jokes and certain words until this day I wish I didn't know about any of that because it's just perverted my brain so much that I almost think that's the normal way of life and that's how things are meant to be and that's what life is there's no other way but studying the bible studying about god studying about jesus studying about his love for us it's a completely different picture so i urge you please study these things i'll write down all the scripture i've mentioned in this video below please look them up pray about it ask the holy spirit to help you understand these things and convict you if necessary no one is free from this conviction okay we all struggle with all kinds of sin something is wrong with my light if your light is flickering ask god to help fix it and expose what needs to be exposed and heal you from what needs to be healed and this is actually a prelude to my next video which is how to overcome sexual immorality so you can worship god better and more in your life i'm vian damaris and i will see you tomorrow or day after i'm not sure when until then bye and always strive to be like jesus